In this video, we're going to do an action pose drawing demo. I'll show you how to draw Chun-Li of Street Fighter fame in an action pose. We can think about this as being something similar to splash screen art. We're going to try and make it look cool and dynamic. I'm going to fold in the traditional constructive anatomy ideas that you might find in books such as Andrew Loomis's figure drawing for all it's worth. This is where we construct the figure. We think about structure, primary form, secondary form, tertiary form, and we try and make things look solid. But one of the things is that even though we're drawing dynamic action, we are limited to a two-dimensional bit of paper. So while structure is important, often what is more important is to think about the dynamic composition of the page and how to move the viewer's eye through the image and through the action using two-dimensional graphic composition. Anyway, lots of different ideas to unpack here. This one should be fun, so hopefully you'll join me. You can follow along or just sort of check this out and incorporate these ideas into your own work. Let's get started. All right, welcome to the Drawing Codex. My name is Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this channel, we are all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. For reference, I have the Street Fighter Memorial Archive Beyond the World book. I've got a little thumbnail. I'll just flash it on the screen here so you can sort of see what I, you know, have in mind. This process is very similar to how I would, uh, you know, do the comics that I normally do. So you can see this is the Star Atlas Core book that I've been working on recently. Um, this is my kind of, you know, R a fantasy book that I did a, a, a while ago, um, again, in sort of, you know, French and yeah, you know, just working through the sort of action poses and trying to come up with something that's kind of dynamic is, you know, often super important for comics and splash screen art, etc. Um, so yeah, often what we have to think about are the dynamics of the frame, right? How things kind of feel from this sort of two-dimensional standpoint, right? So creating a lot of diagonals, creating a lot of movement, using speed lines, these things are really gonna help us more so than structure to really give us that sense of movement or dynamism. But we need to be able to focus on the structure and the drawing and the anatomy in order to kind of sell the rest of it. But again, it's important to understand that, again, Lots of structure tends to make your art look stiff. And, you know, what we're often actually after is, uh, again, that dynamism that's more about composition. And this is often what I'm, you know, doing day in, day out, just, you know, thinking about compositions, drawing little frames and things. Um, yeah, not all of them are action based, right? It's important to be able to do all of this. Uh, but yeah, this is what I do day in, day out, just drawing, drawing different characters, different poses. Um, yeah, and sort of playing around with these ideas. Now, again, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about how I do what I do, um, drawing comics, concept art, etc., you can check out my free quick start guide. Uh, it's aimed to get you up and running quickly um, in Photoshop. Uh, very similar sort of process to how I would, you know, draw these sort of pages here. Anyway, you can check that out if you want to learn a little bit more about how I do what I do. Uh, it's free. The link will be in the description. Go check it out. Anyway, let's jump in and draw something here. So again, I'm sort of following that thumbnail. Um, we can kind of see it here. And, uh, you know, basically what I'm thinking of is is kind of like we, we can sort of think of it as like sort of speed lines radiating out this way. Right. So and uh, we, we kind of have like some sort of fireball that she is kind of throwing because she does have sort of a fireball action. And then I'm going to have sort of an arc going around this way. This is kind of what I'm thinking. And the character is kind of sitting here. All right. We sort of got a head roughly here. We have a torso here. And then, right, I kind of think it would be, again, cool that the torso is kind of facing a little bit sort of this way, right? So I'm just drawing our mannequin. This is exactly the same sort of idea that you would see in Andrew Loomis's books, uh, figure drawing for all it's worth, or, or any of those, if I just sort of show you the basic idea here. So again, you know, we're dealing with standard sort of proportions, male, female proportions. And again, you know, one of the best things about the, the Loomis sort of figure drawing method is he just goes over this constructive anatomy sort of fundamental principle that again, often what we're wanting to do is, is use a stick figure style character to kind of pose. And, you know, 
it's very much linked to the idea of the skeleton. And again, that's what I do all in, you know, all day, every day, right? Uh, just kind of, you know, drawing these figures. So that's sort of what we're trying to do. First, the skeleton. Then secondly, as I described in that, uh, you know, other Chun-Li sort of breakdown video, we, we're going to sort of add the, the primary um, forms. But again, I'm not having to draw the whole figure here. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of just drawing a, a little bit of it, which is often, you know, what we do. All right, so I've got a leg here. All right, that leg is going to be there. And then we're going to have the other leg sort of coming behind, right? So we're, we're sort of basically going to see the side profile of her leg here. And we're going to see this other one is kind of behind. So the one that is going here is behind and the one that we're going to see is in front. And so that means that she has a lot of twist on her torso, which is, you know, very, very fundamental, basic uh, sort of dynamic drawing for figure. So apologies if this is a little bit light. Um, uh, I know that that can be trouble if you're on sort of small screen or you don't have a lot of uh, sort of contrast. It can be sort of hard to see what I'm sort of doing here. But uh, that is honestly one of the keys to, to drawing if you are drawing traditionally. Um, make sure you start light. So I'm going to, again, sort of have her head facing down, drawing the Loomis sort of construction. Uh, again, you know, if I was to draw all of these sort of draw through things, I, I would sort of, you know, draw them like this. But as I've often said, um, you know, you do that for practice, but this is me showing you how I would do it. So I'm not going to do too much of that. Right. And then I'm going to add some simple construction. This is just blocking in. So what I'm doing first is kind of focusing on primary form. And here and there, I, I sort of, you know, think about, oh, maybe I should just make sure that face is going to work. Maybe I should just do this, right? Maybe I should just do that. Right. So then we've got an arm, right? This arm is kind of coming here, thinking about toilet roll logic. Um, the most important academic, um, you know, concept in drawing is the toilet roll. Uh, the most sophisticated... <laughs> sort of idea, right? Where are these basic forms pointing? Always good to just think about that, right? So we've got this one it's sort of coming here. And I sort of thought again, we'll kind of have like this hand here near her face. So just thinking about those primary, right, sort of forms, we can sort of follow along here, right? Right, we're going to have this sort of torso. And again, the torso is pretty, pretty sort of small compared to the hips. Right, so just sort of roughing that in. Now I'm going to rough in some basic, right, sort of secondary form markers. We're going to have hand doing something like this and we're going to have our big cool spiked things All right and the the goal here is to you know yeah really sort of think about is this going to work does this look good does this not look good Right, so again, the idea is the arm has kind of moved here, right, and, and maybe it's sort of let go, yeah, somewhere sort of around here, right, so the this sort of fireball, right, is kind of almost going, right, in an arc here or kind of over here. Right, we've got something, something like that. So, uh, as I often say, um, yeah, super important to understand that, you know, the, the more we sort of think about structure, Right, that the less I'm going to really, you know, be able to sort of get the the composition to 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 look good, because um, I'm just thinking about one thing, right? When I, when I should be sort of thinking about another. Um, so you need to bounce between, like, what what am I thinking about, right? Am I thinking about structure? Am I thinking about um, gesture? Am I thinking about anatomy? Am I thinking about the costume? Am I thinking about the character's pose? 
um, you know, sort of what are we thinking about and, and how does that kind of help us? So often, yeah, I feel like it's sort of important to do, right, a, a little kind of pass here and, and just block in all our primary sort of forms, right, and, and just see sort of what happens. So I've blocked in the primary and you can sort of see that like, oh yeah, I feel like that pose might work. Now what I'm going to move into is, um, again, these sort of secondary forms. So we've got sort of the, the bust, we've got the neck, right? Can we connect these things up? And let's think about where the, right, the cylinder of that sort of neck would be, right? We've also got roughly, just putting in that center line there, bump, find some dimensionality. Right, within that face. Again, these are all rough. I, I might re I might completely erase and rework this face if I you know if I find it's in the wrong spot or whatever. Um but yeah, and then we've got some of these. Now again they, they really feel like they're sort of on the side here. Let's carry that across, carry that across mass that in again are they in the right kind of spot do they feel okay and then again we got to sort of think about well she's kind of rotating like this way right so she's kind of going like this and that means that again these things are going to be sort of rotating and flicking in the same direction right so they're kind of going this way these ones behind here, right, are sort of going to be coming out as well. Right. Again, just thinking about, you know, where these where these might go, what that might look like. Right, we've got the rib cage. Oh, that's going to go down there. And we've got this sort of twist here. Right. Oh. Uh, might place these breasts a bit lower. Now again, we don't necessarily see separation between the breasts. We're just kind of roughing this in from an anatomical point of view. All right, and here we've got sort of rib cage, right musculature. Let's think about. Look, yeah, where where would that musculature be underneath? That will kind of help us a lot. Always good to draw through, always practical if you have the time, you know, if, if the drawing needs to be sort of big enough to, you know, go through and, you know, finesse all this stuff. Right, you know, like draw, draw through, and then probably on top of that, right, we're going to have our... actual structure of the costume that we see. All right, so we see this down here, got the toilet roll, boom, boom, that's coming down there. And then let's think more about, again, like what does the overall shape of her bust sort of combine, right? So we sort of then think about right what is this what is this form overall how do we sort of rough that out yeah we'll erase a lot of these lines to begin with um, but yeah and then we're gonna I'm gonna rough in again these kind of circles here see if we can sort of get them feeling right right and that's gonna go up there boom and then it will kind of come down here all right so go around there, right, and then, oh no, that one goes, oh yeah, so that goes up there, so again, uh, I've, I've never sort of done this before, this is, um, you know, but, but doing this type of stuff is super important if you, if you aspire to, you know, just be sort of a, a general sort of illustrator, right, be, being able to kind of, you know, think about the character, work through, um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't drawn a lot of these 
sort of characters a bit. Uh, I mean, it, it is worth noting that I did. Um, I have worked on you know a lot of sort of official Capcom um, art. I, I did. Uh, I think I did about thirty Teppan cards, and Teppan is like a you know a shared world sort of TCG Capcom um, property. I think I did thirty cards for them, doing all sorts of Capcom stuff, uh, like Mega Man, Street Fighter, um, Dark Stalkers. Um, uh, yeah, what else? Devil May Cry. I had a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so I, I I have a lot of experience having to break down a character and kind of having to do it quickly, right? If I'm drawing my comics, right? So you saw the you saw the comics that I'm you know drawing. It's very different to you know you, you really get to know a character, right? Like you know the Ara character I drew hundreds of times. You know the characters that I'm drawing for the the sort of Star Atlas book that I'm doing at the moment. You know I, I really really get a feel for that character. Whereas working as a um, uh, you know just like, like a general purpose uh, sort of modern illustrator. Is, uh, is a little bit different because you've you got to be able to kind of like nail the likeness. Uh, you've got to be able to sort of get it right. Um, and then there's things that people will care about and there's things that they sort of won't care about. Um, but yeah, just being able to kind of work through and be like, okay, what's happening here? How, how does this go? So yeah, because I think when I did the Chung Lee breakdown, I didn't, um, I didn't actually draw these things on the front. All right, so that goes around. Boom. But yeah, having the structure right is super important. So, you know, progressing through it, getting the primary forms right. Um, again, it seems like there's some other, right? Sort of maybe like that. There's also a costume sort of detail there. And we also have, again, some of that stuff there. So again, just like, let's block it in with a circle. Same thing over here, right? Let's block that in with a circle, All right? And uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of those things come down to very, it comes down to economics, right? Uh, like, you know, how much, how much time can you afford to spend learning a character? Um, Cause you know, like if I've got to draw Chun Li a hundred times, it's like, let's really get in there. Let's figure it out. And there's a lot of artists who are like that. You know what I mean? They're, like they, they are, um, you know, specific fan art slash Capcom um, artists and they do an amazing job of just nailing the characters right and you can see a lot of them on the you know like a lot of them a lot of the people who you know are, have gotten really really good at that you know are, are in this book um uh whereas again that that's not that's not really me that's not the approach i i'm sort of taking um but i have done have drawn official capcom uh before so again, we'll see, I, I might, I feel like that torso might be a little bit big there, but again, that's kind of how it looks in, in the design there, right? Like that's kind of, that's kind of what they have going on. Um, so again, we've got this sort of thing. I, I can probably put this in, right? At any point, but it's good to, it's probably good to do it now. Boom. And think about, again, maybe some kind of, right, magic coming off her hands. I, I have no idea what the official sort of Street Fighter lore is for what this stuff is when they shoot fireballs. And so I, I'm sure there's some, again, let me know in the comments if there's some good resources for that. Um, again, thinking about Cylinders on top of cylinders, right? Let's find right that structure, right? Boom. Let's get that, and then again, I'm going to think about. Let's find an imaginary cylinder that goes around all of that, and then sort of use that to figure out where, right, where all my spikes are going to go. Oh, wobbly spike there. F fake that one, All right? This one comes out here, All right? Might be another one over there. Boom. And 
we're safe. We kind of have something that looks sort of like the spikes that they should be. Again, here they're so chunky and big. I feel like, uh, again, um, you know, I said this a few times doing different sort of uh, demos for, for Capcom stuff is you've often got to make them look so much bigger than, than you would have uh, initially thought. So I can see here again, I'm sort of, you know, like this one is nowhere near as big as, as that other one. So let's, uh, let's take that back. Bom, bom, bom. Um, yeah, see if we can get this. Let's draw through, make sure we're understanding where that goes. So yeah, with most of these sort of drawing demos, what I'm focusing on, um, it, it's just the drawing, right? Like, let's just get the drawing right. Um, if you, if you want to see some more, I used to do a lot of, uh, you know, sort of start to finish in Photoshop sort of things. Um, but I feel like it's a lot easier to see um, with sort of traditional drawing actually what's going on. And there's a less sort of monkeying around. But if you do want to see me, you know, do some of these in sort of Photoshop, again, using the, you know, same sort of process that I'd use in my quick start guide or, you know, that again, I'm using for comics, etc. Let me know. Um, we'll see, see if we can fit some of those in. Um, but yeah, I feel like, uh, you know, it's a lot more real when we're drawing, right? You know, it's a lot, it's a lot less, it's a lot less challenging to, um, you know, do it in Photoshop sometimes because you can, you know, edit, you can, you know, futz around. Um, and I, and I have found that while, you know, drawing digitally is, you know, how it's done really. Uh, these days for, you know, most professional work just because you save time, right? Um, and again, if you are working on, you know, one of these like, uh, you know, like when I'm working on a, a card for a, you know, you know, a professional sort of job or something, it's so, so important to be able to edit. Like the number of times that, you know, you just get some ridiculous level of, of sort of feedback where you have to change like 10, 12, 100 things, um, you know, very, very specific to do with the property, right? Totally reasonable requests, but, you know, just things that, uh, you know, are, are easy to miss, right? Again, if, especially if you're not 100% uh, up on the, the subject matter or, you know, the, the particular expression of, of how they see the, the IP go or all that stuff. Um, that's just part of the job, right? That's part of the process. Um, yeah, um, it, it very hard to do that, you know, if you're sort of drawing on pencil and then scanning it or, or something like that. It's, it's uh, yeah. Um, and, and in general, I mean, this is sort of a tangent, but it, it's in general is a little bit easier to um, do that type of work if you are painting versus um, doing line and color style. Line and color style is very, very good and efficient for doing... Um, sort of concept art because often you, you can get really specific uh, quite quickly and even if you've got to change you can just redraw or you can hack around right we, we don't need it to be super polished right when we're when we're doing concept art but doing it for illustration I found to be very challenging because often the expectation these days is so much that um, things can be changed right um, and it's very tricky if you're doing line and color to just kind of like move the nose a bit or tweak things around because you're, you're sort of changing different layers of art. Anyway, I digress. Um, and again, let me know in the comments if you would like to hear more of that sort of, um, I, I guess, sort of professional advice sort of stuff. Um, I've been thinking about doing a podcast format for that type of advice as opposed to visual because um, there's often not a lot if we're sort of talking about um, you know freelancing advice etc there's often not a lot of uh, you know sort of visuals to go along with it right it, it's often just just advice but yeah anyway so you can see I've done a few things that are a little bit dumb right Firstly, I haven't really drawn this, but I've drawn this. And that typically will get you into lots of trouble. I think I'll be okay, but we'll see. Um, the other thing is, again, you know, I haven't really blocked in this. So best practices um, uh, is always to kind of 
make sure that uh, let's think about fingers right how many fingers have we got we've got one going here one going here right right up up right and then sort of down right think about that right and then we're gonna have like a like a thumb here here and we can do that again that's super rough not really how you should draw hands again I'll raise that in a minute I'm just sort of blocking it in um, again hand here let's think about we've got one let's check the size again this one could be a little bit bigger a bit of a better better look so again I'll probably do I'll do a second pass on some of these just sort of clean it up right one right so two again getting pretty getting pretty hacky but we'll, we'll sort of see um, so yeah, so I've got those. I'm just gonna take them back a little bit to remind me to do that. All right, and figure out that mess. But at least now I'm like, oh, there's something there. We'll see again. This hand's probably too big, but yeah. Um, and here we've sort of got got a few things. Let's take this out and think about again this sort of energy. Right, so we're thinking in general it's going to come here and so what that can mean is that again you know if, if I'm drawing this on the fly you know I can sort of really think about what I need to draw and what I what I sort of don't so let's think about here what what's happening with this anatomy right so I'm going to have sort of coming over here right going to draw the anatomy first right we've sort of got glutes right we've got this line here right that's going to come down there and probably again it's going to be made up of right Take it back. Let's make this a bit smaller. I feel like that's going to give us a bit more room. Again, just going through. I'm sort of trying to put this together in my head. Right. classic high cut thing go down and let's think about like what's happening to this costume I feel like I feel like we need to get let's make this a little bit a bit smaller All right get the hip out we've got Got that kind of shape, which is again not not super realistic. So this is where again, you know, we we need to think about and and you can work on like what exactly are we doing? Are we gonna are we gonna sort of just keep trying to get the line right? 
are we going to try and think more about structure? So I'm trying to think about where that, right, where this hip is, right, where the glutes are going to be, how big everything should be. How big should the sort of leg be in general? Again, now that we're sort of here. But I do think, again, we probably need to go out on these hips a bit more. All right, and then this needs to come out a little bit more. Because as I said in the breakdown, right, she has super chunky thighs and we need to at least get that right. Otherwise it might come back to us in a right in an art review. Someone will be like, no no no, she has chunky thighs, you need to do this. Um, and they'd probably be like, and we need all these little things here and uh, we need to make these uh, spike bracelets 10% smaller. Um, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> right. So I think again, I'm, I'm sort of feeling like maybe this proportion was a little bit sort of big. Right. Try and sort of create a right a sort of a, a line here that makes sense. And yeah, this is where you know you can look at sort of uh, you know reference specifically. Um, again, uh, sort of fitness models, people who have a good sort of um, physicality to them. Um, you know, see if you can find some cool poses. Here we go. Well. So again, I'm often just putting in, right, like sort of bits here to, to just make sure like, will, right, will this work? So what's happening here? We can think about, think about both, right? Can we create some dynamic movement with this costume? Again, I'm sort of just making stuff up, right? We're just, I'm just making stuff up. Um, but I think it can really help. All right, so again, let's draw through. We're going to have that, right? So we're going to sort of come. All right, we've got that. If we were to draw through, draw the glutes, right? Again, the more anatomy you can draw, right? It could be sort of useful to draw all of the sort of the pelvic area, right? Because that's going to sort of allow you to really think about like, right, yeah, where are these bones? That's going there. That's going there. Again, we're still going to have our um, sort of hip bone sticking out, right, on the other side, right? So that's going to sort of create, right, like this. And then, right, might have something like that. And then you can kind of sit back and be like, oh, does that look good? Um, again, this is a big difference between, you know, the, the sort of the drawing lesson, right? You know, where you know, often uh, we're trying to be sort of get get the drawing right. And then, again, often what you're doing is, is you're sort of drawing is a mix of trying your best to get the structure right. And then also just saying, like, what looks cool, right? You know, how do these lines work? Um, So again, just sort of making stuff up with what might sort of look interesting here. Um, and again, you, you often see uh, me and, you know, other artists who are, you know, you're sort of professional um, and you're meant to kind of like, let's stick here and stay, let's stay in one spot. And, you know, yeah, what, what actually happens is you kind of move around, right? You kind of keep fiddling because, uh, you know, I sort of know like, oh yeah, I've kind of, I've kind of gotten this bit right. Let's, let's, let's have a go with something else. Again, that's getting a little bit mushy. Um, and we're going to need some speed lines and a whole bunch of other stuff to make this look sort of interesting. But you can see we've got the Got the basics there, and oh, those are different. 
sort of boots to what I had in the previous sort of version of the design. Um, yeah, and you could really sort of work the, the anatomy here. You know, again, I'm being pretty stylized with it. I, I like the sort of look of this. It's not necessarily super realistic. Right, and again, I think I'm going to sort of try push this out and sort of have this weird... Right, sort of angle here. That doesn't make a lot of sense, but but might sort of look cool. Bow. Okay. So again, a lot of that stuff is sort of sorted. It's just still a bit rough and we've still got some draw through. Um, so now what I'm going to do is is think about, again, you know, do, do we have some of these sort of speed lines here? Um, do we have some sense of like, you know, where, where is the character, right? Maybe it would be good to have some, right, some sort of leaves or sort of other sort of objects, right? Let's see if we can really think about where, right, this fireball thing is going and I'll see if I can find some reference for it but it's probably not important for this sort of purpose so we've got a couple of like awkward tangents here right where we've really got to sort of figure out right like where do these where do these lines go um, and this is often you know the difference and this is often what takes the time right it's just kind of thinking about okay we've got overlaps right I've got this thing sort of coming here right got that thing coming there <laughs> right let's see if we can erase that out now a good idea compositionally is just not to get these things to combine, right? So, um, yeah, like a, a, a good idea is to, you know, make sure we sort of separate, right, these concepts. So let's see if we can get, right, let's get, this thing's just going to have to get a bit smaller as it goes along so that it doesn't, interfere with with these lines because I've got this line of the leg got this line here right got this line here don't don't and so yeah let's just make sure all these sort of things again I forget exactly how this kind of energy sort of bowl slash pattern might work and then again probably need to add some some speed lines to it. We'll work that out in a minute. Again, just blocking in, thinking about what might be there. And I'm going to hope that a lot of these kind of speed lines come to my rescue to reinforce some of the basic logic. So the speed lines are really based around the the fireball that she's sort of throwing. And this again is probably not in canon for exactly the pose that she would use for the fireball. And normally when you are doing professional sort of work, that stuff does matter, right? Um, boy, does it matter. So that's the kind of feedback that we'd often get. See if we can follow some of this along, and and again, you know, it, it's tricky because you know a, a really good thing I would do, you know, if I was if this was like a professional sort of illustration, is to you know work some blur, some extra speed lines, some some extra kind of emphasis on there. When when you've just got pencil, right? We we sort of need to work with the medium that we've got. Um, so, you know, if you're trying to represent sort of speed with, you know, the, the pencil, right, you know, one of the things we can do is 
again, you know, just get a little bit sort of rougher with it. Hopefully not too rough, but that might be better than trying to sort of draw detail on there. Because uh, again, you know, one of the problems of trying to sort of draw too much detail is that unless it kind of conforms to the again that sort of feeling of of speed right it's it's always going to look sort of static right see if we can add some extra bits and pieces debris right Maybe the idea of some other bits and pieces behind there. And, you know, this will hopefully allow us to emphasize what is actually going on. Let's make that start. Maybe not quite. Maybe make this a bit more, a bit more aggressive from a shape language point of view. Same thing here. That might help. So, eh, it's kind of, right? It's kind of there, kind of not. Yeah. Often with these splash screen things, right, you, you've got to be like so, 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 so dynamic. Um, same thing with cards, right? It's like when it's an action thing, right, it's really got to be super dynamic. So, and again, you know, advantage of, um, you know, having this, digital would be you know we can just move these things around do them on different layers you know if you sort of get stuck right uh, you know that's kind of all right sort of all good because uh yeah just kind of move it around like oh i need a bit of extra space here um but that is again you know why i really recommend starting you know and practicing as much as you can with um you know, pencil, right? Because it forces you to think, forces you to get those things right the first time. If you get them right the first time, you don't have to redraw them as much, which is, you know, sort of means that, you know, things can, life can be a little bit easier. And uh, yeah, you can, that's often money in the bank, right? Um, all right, so let me just sort of get above the drawing for a little bit. All right, so get above it. Just gonna double, triple check, right? Like, I feel like often like the neck connection here can be sort of problematic, right? We need to think about right, what's happening with the with the mass of the skull there, or it can feel a bit sort of funny, right? Again, let's check. Like the ear feels like the ear could be right down a bit lower. Let's not see that other thing there. Right, let's think about putting in the nose. Right, think about where the eyes would be. Right, mouth is there. Does it still feel okay? Right, got sort of hairline. Right. And again, her hair is going to be sort of blowing that way. So just double, triple checking, right? Lining stuff up. Let's get, let's sharpen this pencil. Make it a little bit blunter. Let's erase off all this gunk off our hand. 
not smudging everything. And yeah, super smart to, you know, get a bit of paper or something so we can work on this face. I feel like again what what I'm what I'm going to try and do actually before I do that is see if I can while I've got a sharp pencil see if we can deal with these hands because that means if if they start to go pear shaped then it's going to be very easy for me to have another go later so that's too many fingers. Something like that might be better. Yeah, so again, bit of a weird hand, bit bit sort of stylized. Same thing here. Um, one, two, three, four. Yeah, that seems about right. Right, so we're kind of, right, sort of coming up here. Right, then we're going here, and then it's don't, don't. Right. Get rid of that. And again, we sort of got probably like sort of too many lines there, right? It's like do do we actually need all those lines for for what we're doing? Uh, again, and should I be should I be trying to be fancy with the with the fingers? Because that's where again it can often be just super problematic if we try and get sort of too too fancy with it. So got one, two, three, and then this one. Right, the idea is kind of this one is going right sort of up more like that and hitting behind the thumb so again you know these are things that we would you know finesse more if we um, were doing another pass on it um, but yeah like a, a, a huge thing is to just not focus too much on yeah so you can kind of see right looking at the hand right like what's what's going to happen there Right, this thumb is actually looks like it's going to be up here. And uh, a good drawing paper, right, will sort of allow you to do more of this than a than a low quality sort of drawing paper. And again, this is this is kind of stuff where um, we're much better off. Right, coming back to it. Right, got this. Because it gets kind of fiddly. Right. Again, I'd give this hand a, a 2 out of 10, right? Um, it's It's kind of there. I think the idea is there probably just needs a, an, an, another pass, right? Um, and again, that's why I was like, let's do it here, because that way um, might have another, right, sort of go. But I think, again, I'm sort of running out of pencil there. Let's take this face back, see what we can do. Well, right, think about the nose and again, she has this kind of fairly turned up sort of pointy nose in there at least. Um, and here I'm just going to think about where the top of those eyes are going to be. And you could draw her with like many, 
many different styles. So often, yeah, if super useful to draw the the actual sort of features first, get them sort of dialed in. Let's have a go again. I feel like this head again needs to come out that way. We've got this, right? Got that. I feel like. Right, this is kind of so often again. Like a, another thing that really makes a big difference is is kind of hairlines, right? Um, often makes a like a huge difference to what the what the character kind of feels like. Again, I'm I'm sort of drawing this character again, like you know, a little bit in the style that I would draw, you know, a female character in. Um, I think often again my experience from working on uh, projects is that uh, you know typically they they have a a version of the character from an anatomical and, and even like a stylistic sort of point of view that they are actually trying to model. So you know often too much of like too much of a personal style can can make it hard to work in um, uh, sort of you know marketing art and, and that kind of thing because um, if it's just standard then no one no one really minds whereas uh, yeah if you, if you have a particular style it, it tends to it tends to make things look a bit weird um, from a consistency standpoint all right so we've got this we had this Coming around there, I think that still kind of works, all right? Got that, all right? We've got the hair. It's gonna be super tight. Got another one of these things. Uh, yeah, we don't really need another ear behind there. We're probably not gonna see that. Again, she's sort of like her hair so is sort of turning that way. So yeah, we might see a few things kind of breaking in there if we right things are going to go around in that direction if they if they do. None oh, of this makes really sense. I don't know how many of these things they're meant to be or whatever. But again, yeah, just looking for some interesting shapes. All right. So again, I, you know, we could easily play with the face for for a lot longer, play with a lot of these things, but hopefully that gives you, you know, sort of general idea of of how how I would kind of work this. Um, again, the last thing I normally do is just let's sort of tilt this up, right? Just sort of check check this face um, and kind of see how I'm sort of looking at it here. And yeah, I mean, to me, I feel like just the the eye there. Right, it's a little bit off when it when I sort of look at it um, from from the right angle. Right, need to kind of get a little bit more. Over here. And yeah, that will probably come down. I feel like that one could kind of come up. So there's all these little things, right, that um, tend to spot a lot more. Um, and, and again, it's that, that progression of not looking at it straight on. 
Um, yeah, you, you, all day, every day, if I'm not doing demos, I'm, I'm looking at straight on because I have a, a tilted desk, but it's very hard to get it to work when we are recording. So all the drawing demos and things that you see are kind of, yeah, have that problem where I'm not looking at it straight on. And so I, things always look awkward. And yeah, so many times I've finished recording and then just been like, oh my God, that is no good. Um, yeah, anyway. And that is something as well that, you know, I spent a lot of time struggling with, you know, before because, um, yeah, I'd, you know, frequently be working on something and be like, oh yeah, look at this awesome thing I drew. And then you kind of go to sleep, wake up and it's all wonky. It's all wonky. Start again, right? Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. You have failed. Try again, maybe if you can. <laughs> so yeah, it's just a matter of checking that, rechecking that. Um, yeah, just constantly, constantly checking, constantly making sure all those little bits are there. Um, again, you know, probably probably could you know do with a bit more um, finessing, but hopefully you get the idea. Again, that's sort of how I would do it. You know, we might put in a background or something like that. You know, some sort of abstract bits and pieces. Often, again, you know, if you're putting in a background to this, it, it's really just a matter of sort of thinking about how can I tell the story of where they are, right? How can I quickly sort of say, you know, bam, you know, th there's like, a, again, you might have a little sort of picture of a temple here, some forest somewhere else. Or again, if they're meant to be in someone else's stage, you know, you'd put a, put a little bit of stuff here or there. But anyway, you get the idea. Um, it's so mainly, uh, this is sort of what I wanted to go over, which is just the anatomy, um, posed, um, again, you know, trying to sort of solve some of these things, um, not super finished, but you know, once you're at this stage, it really is just a matter of, you know, polishing, doing final lines. Most of the mistakes happen here. Most of the things go wrong here. So if you can kind of get this sorted, a lot of the rest of it is downhill from my experience. Anyway, let me know if this one was interesting, um, whether you got some stuff out of it, whether you'd like to see some other sort of, you know, action pose things like this. Often I'm just focusing on, uh, again, you know, a little bit more structure, a little bit more sort of drawing demo um, stuff. Uh, this one's been sort of fun to do. This is the kind of stuff I actually like doing and drawing. But again, often the question is, how do you do that? What, what are you doing? You know, how, how does the proportions work? So hopefully this gives you a, a little bit of an insight into how I, how I utilize the things that I'm doing day in, day out. Anyway, that's all I've got. Um, we'll catch you around. Let me know in the comments uh, what you thought of this one. And uh, happy happy drawing.